Possibly the most difficult thing to do in art is to paint a face. So to teach it, I like to break it down by individual features so that you can practice the color palette, the light and shadow, and all of the characteristics of each individual feature, build up your confidence, and then put it all together to paint a full face. Let's give it a shot. So for the mouth, first of all, we kind of will be starting with the mouth line. And so I'm gonna start with the mouth line here as if we drew the whole face. And so the mouth line is just like a, a, a landmark that tells us where it is in relation to the nose. And then the corners of the mouth are marked by dropping verticals from the pupils in the eyes. Okay, so you'll wind up with something like this, a line that has two points to end up with. Okay, I actually am going to move this up a little bit because I want to paint the chin and the neck. Okay, so I'm going to move it to here. All right, so let's say that's where my mouth line is in my sketch of my, of my person. Um, so now, we want to define the upper lip, lower lip, and uh, intersection between the two lips. I'm going to draw a mouth at rest, okay, that's closed. When the expression changes in the mouth, uh, it's, it's as simple as looking at your reference and the shape of the lips and the opening in between the lips based on the expression. However, when the expression changes, it also affects the cheeks, the chin, the nose, and the eyes, right? So an expression is not just a single feature changing. It's all of them moving together, okay? So that's just, let that be said. Okay, so we have basically like a nose up here, right? Something like this will be our nose. And below the nose, we have a cupid's bow. Okay, the, the mouth typically is, is maybe like one third wider than the nose is. All right, something like that. Okay, the cupid's bow is the little kind of uh, area above your upper lip where your mustache grows. Maybe, if you have a mustache, if you're anyway um, and it's sort of shaped like like this right and so I like to just indicate the size and shape of the cupid's bow uh, and then create my upper lip based off of that now if you look at your reference um, yourself hopefully is what you're looking at right now um, <clears throat> they all have different shapes okay and everyone is going to be different. You know, we can, we can draw and, and learn generic, um, sort of universal rules, but then every single person will somewhat break those rules. Okay, and so look closely at your reference and the shape of everything based on the shape of everything else that's around. Okay, so we have the Cupid's bow. Uh, which kind of ends the upper lip and then creates this skin in the mustache area. Okay, from the peak of the cupid's bow, the upper lip tapers down. Now, it's not necessarily a straight line. You, you wanna look closely at it. And actually, in some cases, um, it sort of goes down but then has a slight kind of hump in it, okay? But look closely, and then before you get all the way out to the corner of the mouth, it comes together with the bottom lip and then goes out to the corner. Okay, so don't draw a line to the corner. The line kind of jogs its way down, hits, intersects with the lower lip, and then goes out to the corner. And then we wanna make sure 
Now we're looking closely and hopefully getting a good amount or a decent job making it symmetrical. If it's supposed to be, we should be close to symmetrical, if not completely symmetrical. Um, there's always subtle differences, but okay. So that's like the basic shape of an upper lip. Okay. Really important that it comes together and then out to the corner. It doesn't go directly to the corner. All right. And now the lower lip is normally fuller than the upper lip and where the two lips come together. It sort of um, mimics the shape of the upper lip, but it's not as drastic. So in the center, where the lips come together, there's a little kind of shape that's sort of like the Cupid's bow, but not as deep. Okay. Uh, and then it sort of jogs out, down, and then together to the corner. So out, down, and then together to the corner. Something like this. And that subtle little difference is really important for it feeling realistic as opposed to just a straight line. Okay, now the lower lip sort of swoops its way from the corner of the mouth uh, to the center of the lower lip, which is the fullest part of your lips normally. Um, so the height of the lower lip here should be a little bit bigger than the height of your upper lip in general, not 100% all the time. Sometimes you know, people's lips are much thinner. Sometimes people's lips are much thicker. Sometimes the shape, I mean, the shapes vary greatly. But as I understand it, and as I've observed in the world, it sort of goes like this. So there's an area of your lower lip that kind of is shaped like this, right? So from these parts of the upper lip that it's kind of like that's where it really is full and it really is um, like closest to us here and then it gradually swoops its way back underneath the upper lip like that okay again working on symmetry as best as we can nothing is exact all right, so it swoops back, nice soft, uh, back to the corner. And then you can just get rid of any construction lines that you may or may not want. Okay. Uh, so that, that's, that's the basic shape anyway. And then take a look at it. Go back, you know, adjust. Make sure it's symmetrical. Like that's why that's why you sketch first um, before you paint, right? Because you know the more layers you get on there, the the tougher it is to change, and the less you want to backtrack, right? Okay, uh, so decent, you know, good enough for now. Okay, <clears throat> so now we go lip to chin. And so we want to look at the height of the lips and then the height of the space below the lower lip to where the chin kind of starts. And it's usually about the same height. So if this distance here should be about the same distance to where the chin starts. So I like to just give myself a, a kind of a clean construction line. You could give also give yourself a vertical bisector just for symmetry purposes with that. Okay, draw light, draw light. Um, so yeah, you'll have like uh, some sort of indicator of where your chin starts. And then the height of the chin, right, is usually just like a little bit bigger than, than that space, right? So that space is there, then the chin is usually about here. Okay, so then you have the base of your chin, something like this. 
okay? And so the chin, I like to just think of it as, again, like one of these sort of spherical things, okay? And then it transitions its way or itself back to the jaw, okay? So now, look at the corners of your mouth, go down and take a look at the shape of your chin and how it transitions to the jawline and then back to the corners of the jaw. So it kind of is like this roundish form like this. I needed to widen mine a little bit. <clears throat> and then it transitions on a soft angle to the corner of your jaw. Now this varies greatly depending on the person. Some are much more square, some are much more uh, wide, some are thinner, some are rounder. All right, you really gotta use your eyes. Okay, and then where the mouth line is, we wanna look at All right, so now I'm gonna transition out to create some symmetry. Um, and then just indicating again where the mouth box ends and leads up to the, to the cheek. And then of course we have that little edge of the cheek to find there. Okay, and then the last thing is just to take a look at where the neck comes out of the jawline and the shape of it. It's usually like kind of straight down, maybe it angles out a little bit like a curve, something like that. And so as I look at it, that's kind of what I got going on here in my mirror. Okay, so there's our, there's our basic landmarks. Um, you know, I can give an indication here. All right, something like that. <clears throat> you can get rid of construction lines once you feel good about your placement on things. Because your forms and everything is going to be defined by shading. Okay, by shadows. Now, one thing I do like to do um, in general is just make some marks on the lips for the fullness and the direction of the lips. Um, so you can do this with a pencil. You could wait till after and do it with a marker depending on your style or whatever. But for the bottom lip, it's like in the middle, it's kind of like a little straight line. And then as it goes out, it's like just like slightly kind of like roundish lines like this. And I'm just making a really light indication. Very light, right? But just giving the indication of kind of the, the texture of the skin on the bottom lip. And it goes like, it makes it look round, right? Small indication, no big deal. And then on the upper lip, uh, it's just a little bit different. It kind of like goes upwards like this. Now we don't want to make like so many marks that it looks like we have like dry cracked lips or anything like that. We just want an indication of the direction of the actual skin. Okay. <clears throat> um, so now we'll start painting. Uh, Okay, so I'm going to start with my my number five, or, or sorry, my number seven, uh, which is a slightly smaller round brush. Um, I want to be able to get into these smaller areas a little bit more um, readily. I'm going to use that to be inside of the lips. And then I'm also going to use my number 10 um, to get my larger areas in of the basic skin tone. 
Okay, so I'm going to do a basic skin tone. I'm going to use the same colors. However, um, I'm going to lay down skin tone, which is lighter, and then I'm going to darken it and redden it a little bit for the lips to tone on top of what I already painted as uh, the basic skin tone. So I'm going to mix up a bunch of red again. And make sure it's got plenty of water in there so you have enough paint mixed. I'm going to take some yellow to get it towards orange. And then, of course, orange, it's, the opposite of orange is blue on the color wheel. And so to neutralize this orange so we don't look like uh, Bert and Ernie, right, we put some blue in there to neutralize it. All right, makes it less orangey. And then we take a look at it. Right, my, t my skin tone is always a little bit more towards the red. And so I like it if it's got a little more red tones in it. Some people's skin is a little bit more towards orange or darker and you know, all of that stuff. So just, you know, continue to try to find it and use your test strips. So that to me, is feeling pretty good. I think I maybe just need a little bit more warmth in there, a little more red in there for me. There we go. And just make sure I have enough. Enough water, enough pigment. Um, so I'm going to put a base tone down, right, really lightly. You know, this will be my wash. Um, sort of everywhere. I'll even let it if it goes onto the lips a little bit, no big deal. I'm not gonna be super precise about this first wash layer. And it needs to be everywhere. It needs to be on the, on, the, on the chin. We can always paint lightest to darkest um, with watercolor because, or we should always paint lightest to darkest with watercolor because um, it will cover over, right? Because we, we're working with transparent or semi-transparent translucent color. Um, and so we can't really paint a lighter co color over a darker color and expect that it will cover, okay? All right, so this is the basic <clears throat> skin tone here. Uh, and now we look at our basic and most important shadows. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take some of this blue, right, because I want the shadows to be a bit cooler, but I don't want it to be out of control, um, out of control uh, blue, right? So I, I still want it to have that nice, you know, warm, neutral feeling to it, but it has to be darker, okay? Um, so it's uh, more concentrated pigment and less concentrated uh, concentration of water or less dilution of using water and definitely making sure that I got a healthy amount of blue because that's going to darken things for me as well. And then give it, a, give it a go there. That feels pretty good to me. So while I still have some wetness um, I'm just going to put in basic shadows. All right, so looking at my reference and looking at where where I see darker parts. I'm putting it in like a really, really basic sense. Okay, I'm going to go back into all this, guys. So don't get don't get too worried about it. Okay, so around the jawline, we're going to blend it out and up around the cheeks and stuff. So now I take clean water and control that amount of clean water. And then I'm going to go in 
and I'm going to sort of paint the edges out. And just get those, those colors to incorporate together with one another. I don't want super hard edges, except in some areas you might want hard edges. So I'm just spreading this paint around so it mixes in with the paint that's below. Um, remember that this is practice, guys, so you don't have to, like, be scared to do anything, right? Be like, oh, man, I don't want to screw it up or whatever. Like, it's just practice. There's no screw-ups. Um, and so, you know, don't, don't have an expectation of, you know, trying to make it perfect your first go-round here. So just softening, softening things while we have the wetness or the semi-wetness on our paper so that the edges sort of dissolve into one another unless we want a hard edge, right? And if in that case, then we put something down and we leave it. But right now I wanna soften most of these areas. So now we have depth. Okay, you can always let it dry and go back in and, and paint back into a section as well. And so just a, it's quick strokes with clean water on the areas that we already painted that are still semi-wet. And sometimes I just even just paint the edges. I don't even paint the whole area. I just paint the edges and diffuse them out. I'm going to go back and darken things that need to be darker and uh, sharpen things that need to be sharper. So this is just this is just the beginning to get some depth into our work. I'm not going to do too much with the nose because we that was the last video was nose. One of you sounds like you're whispering or something. We can hear you, but it was very ominous and scary. Okay. All right, something like that. No big deal. But the important shadows that define the cheeks, right here and then here, shading around the jawline to give depth to the jawline. Important shadow underneath the bottom lip that defines the shape of the chin. Important shadow underneath the neck that defines the throat and sends the neck backwards and the chin forwards. And then again, if you recall, this really important shadow at the base of the nose here. Okay, and just a little clean water onto our onto the semi-wet paint. Gives us a nice soft feeling to our stuff. Okay, now onto the lips. With my number seven, okay, I take that same color, but now I just redden it some more. And I don't wanna look like I have lipstick on. At the same time, I don't want it to be the same tone as my skin tone. Okay, and I do want a little bit less water and a little bit more pigment in my color and so that to me I'll, I'll check it that looks decent the only thing I'm worried about is is the the amount of water in relation to the pigment so I'm going to actually get a bunch more color mixed in all three colors to find the same color I like that color but um, with less water and more pigment. And so when I paint here like this, right, it's just a little bit too strong red. So I need to get some yellow and some blue in there because uh, yellow and blue is green. Green is the opposite of red. Okay, that, that's looking better to me. 
something like that okay and so get it in my brush uh, first I'm going to just paint the lips in their entirety paying close attention to my edges now I don't want bleeding to occur so I'm not going to touch anywhere that is wet if you have to wait a little bit for um, the areas around your lips to dry do it okay so now they have a flat tone on them but I really like the tone and so now we just have to incorporate some light and shadow so I'm going to use the same shadow color that I had before there was some of that lip color still in my brush so it'll mix in a little bit just going to give it a check decent decent um, so now the outside third of the lips are in shadow like that okay coming in with a clean brush and I'm just controlling that wetness a little bit I want to keep the color on there but the outside third so it goes back okay on the upper lip it's kind of the same story I'm actually gonna get a smaller brush I'm gonna get my my detail my detail brush here Right. Now, while my paint is still wet on the paper, or at least semi-wet, I'm blocking like that, and so we're in pretty good shape. You can give some uh, some upward strokes here if you'd like on the upper lip. That's nice, kind of little effect sometimes. And same with the lower lip. You can give some of these downward, sort of more circular strokes here if you'd like. Okay, and then the last thing is I'm just going to come in with a little bit of clean and lift off some light so I got light hitting you know basically like right here so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna paint that with clean water just to define that form a little better So I'm going in and, and like I'm getting clean water on there. I want to get a little bit on the top of the upper lip too. I'm getting clean water on there and, and sort of like waking up that area. And then I'm cleaning off my brush and then kind of using the brush as an absorbing material to pull the color off. Okay.
thanks a lot for watching. Leave any questions or comments below. See you next time.